build level. All right, so we are continuing to build the level out here. Um, obviously, that was for uh, this is for the the YouTube video as well. Uh, all right, we're creating this function for create spike. That way, we can actually see the spikes on the level. We have the ground. Um, we know that it's a spike up. So let's go ahead and finish creating this out. Create spike mesh. Um, we're going to take in the context. Uh, we're going to take in the width, um, the height, uh, and then I don't think there's anything else we really care about with this, right? It's just going to be like the width and the height of it. It's going to be a triangle facing upwards. Uh, we're going to return a, I guess this is going to be a game result with a mesh in it. So then we'll just go ahead and return a mesh builder. Um, all right, so this is gonna be a triangles. I know it says triangles, but uh, we, we only need one here. It's gonna take a reference to an array of points. So we can just do reference, array here, and then we want this, this point obviously needs to be a um, three of them. So I can have like three, six, nine, 12, um, as long as it's a, uh, uh, if, oh, I forgot the word for, for a base um, multiple, as long as it's a multiple of three, that works just fine. I create a whole bunch of triangles all over the place. So um, let's figure out like where we want things to be. Probably I'm going to say that the base is like over in a top left maybe, but I can do the, the point like this. So the first, the first point is going to be the width divided by half moved over uh, and then half height divided by half moved up. So let's do uh with and in fact if i start if i say like it it actually is over here to the left let's do our width divided by half so it's gonna be a point two our x is width divided by 2.0 um and then i'm gonna put a uh, zero dot zero for for the y um, for the next one so that's going to be let's say the down the bottom right that'll be the full width and the full height um, and then the bottom left will be uh, zero and the full height. Uh, okay, so if we do that, then all we need left is the color. Um, and let's do color new. Let's actually do from RGB here and go figure out what a color to use. Um, what is a good color? I'm thinking sort of like a grayish, maybe this, um, I can't go outside of this window. Uh, let's choose maybe this, like this gray from this messages. Um, oh, right. But I forgot you don't give me the right RGB. You give me, you give me something else. And I don't think I can tell you to be different. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so that's 81, 81, 82. Oh, and this one doesn't have an alpha, so we're fine there. Then we're going to build. Oh, triangles needs a question mark first. Then we can build. Uh, what are you upset about? Expected one argument found zero. Or triangles? Wait a second. Okay, new triangles. I'm passing you in. And then I'm passing your color in. Uh... Then we're question mark you to get a mesh builder and then dot build and returning that. That should be fine. Uh, I can't tell if this is actually a real problem or uh, if it's just like Rust Analyzer having trouble. Oh, build expect an argument. Okay, that's the problem. All right. Build is what's I need to pass into context here. There we go. That that works much better. Okay, so then we're gonna create the spike mesh, pass it in all the world units, and store that in here. Uh, so if I do spike up. Create the spike mesh. Uh, we're gonna do the game. So for the width, the game data dot cell size, uh, and then for the height, the exact same thing. Another a full cell size. Okay, so that gives us our spike. We can now go back into the main library and create this. So. If we match off of a spike, all right. So what's the first thing we want to do? We want to create a floor and put that in. So let's add you in. Um, we create the floor and then we want to create the spike. Um, all right, so then we're going to tell it what its width and height is. We already know that it's the, the standard game data dot cell size. Um, then our, okay, so where is it gonna be location wise? I think it's gonna be exactly the same as this. And then we're going to give it what it, what type it is. And then increment our next object ID. All right, so that creates our, our next object and throws that in there. Let's see if that just worked. Oh no, it did not. All right, what happened? 
Unknown draw error. Right. Uh, and I think we have to come into our draw for the game object and tell it how to draw that too. Um, right here. So that's a good spike. Uh, however, I noticed that our spike is in the middle of the floor. So that's suboptimal. Let's go ahead and move that up. So here in the main library, when we create the spike, we want its location Y to be subtracted by one, one full standard game data cell size. Keep on going to another window and I just want to open up this, the terminal. There we go. And so here's the spike here. Here's a spike here. Uh, do we really have two spikes? Let's double check that. Spike up, spike up. Yeah, so if I add another spike up here. There we go. So lots of spikes for us to worry about now. So that's that's perfect. So now we have spikes drawing to the screen. And what else do we need to worry about uh, level wise? The end, so we wanna put the end into the level as well. Let's go ahead and, and do that. So let's first create a mesh for it. Uh, the mesh should be very similar to the start. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. All right, so create the end mesh, take in the context, take in the width and the height, the world width. We draw the rectangle. Okay, so this should be this should be just fine. And then when we use this, so what are we doing with the start? So we actually want to have a uh, uh, an end width and an end height with this as well. Now we could just actually use the start width and the start height. Um, in fact, we could even end up using, uh, just like changing this to like start end and reusing this mesh for both them, but only changing the color for it. That could be interesting too. Um, for right now, let's go ahead and uh, change our game data here to have a start width and an end width just in case we want to like play with them separately. So let's say I want this one to actually have a width of um, maybe like eight. Now, if I add this here, I need to come into where is that? Is it game data? It is game data. So our raw game data, we need to add that in. And we need to throw that into the main game data too. And that should just make it available to us and throw it in there. Am I missing anything? Oh yeah, right here. Uh, 
Uh, and I think, I think that's the only, oh, we have tons of errors now. That's fun. Let's go figure this out. So we have our end mesh. Okay, this is gonna be self dot I game, actually not self, game data dot end width. Um, we're gonna have a standard cell height. And our world width, why do we need that? I don't think we need that. Oh, we do, to put it on the, we want the end one to be on the left-hand side, so I don't need this at all. See here, I don't want the world width. Uh, I just want you to be 0.0. zero. .0. All right, so that makes you happy there. Uh, no errors so far, so we have the mesh stored away. Um, we can go ahead and switch over to uh, the game object and return this out. And then let's see, the last thing is in the main library, actually populate this. So when we're types end, um, okay, so when it's types end, we want to create a floor. And it's gonna be very similar to our, our start here. Let's go ahead and, and create the floor first. Now there's, I, I know that there's a lot of repeating stuff here. I'm gonna fix this after I get the level built out. Okay, so increase the object ID add the floor in, and then we're gonna create the end. Um, so for our width, uh, I believe that we're setting this to be the full the full cell, I, I think. Um, it doesn't really matter though, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it matters. Uh, let's let's actually say that it's the uh, it's the the actual start, like the the actual end width. Um, the height will be the full cell size. Uh, this is going to be the location, so it's going to be the same thing that we have here. I'm gonna do that cell size. Um, and then we have our floor Y. Okay, so this is gonna be floor Y minus cell size to bring it up one. And then our type. Okay, then we increment our uh, our next object ID as well. Okay, so this is this is pretty nice, except for the fact that uh, we have so many of these things here. Let's let's double check that this actually runs though. If it runs, 
I mean, we won't be able to see it because it's the end of the level. It's like way off to the side here. Uh, but because it's running, we know that it's getting into the grid. Uh, we know that that's all happy and, and all good. Now, it's time to refactor. So something I like to do when refactoring is do a git commit. Okay, so creating the level. Uh, now that I have that, I feel safe enough to refactor. If I totally screw this up, I can just restore the git commit and uh, try again. So we have a lot of repeating code here. We're creating this floor so, so, so many times. I'm thinking that we can create a function here somewhere that like creates and maybe returns a game object for a floor. I have to be careful not to like try to make it a little bit too uh, generic because then I'll, I'll end up you know, with the same the same problem. But if I, let's say I just want to create a, um, a function for like create floor. And I guess like one question is, should this actually be in the grid? Should the grid be in charge of creating objects and putting them inside of itself? If that's the case, then I could create a, a floor, um, like a create a floor function inside of the grid. So let's uh, let's experiment with that. Come here into grid. So if I have it create the floor, it's going to create the game object um, and it can return that. Do I want it to be in charge of like, uh, I don't really know if I like the idea of the grid, like having to know about also creating the objects. Uh, maybe like a world that wraps around the grid might be nice. But the more I look at it, looking at this, I don't know if I like having this in here. Let's put it in here, like just the main library for first, and then if we want to create a world, we can uh, sort of abstract that out. So we have new. Okay, so if I create a floor object, uh, we're gonna create self. I'm gonna return um, a new game object. How would I do this? Well, to begin with, we're gonna take in our, our game object. This is, what we're gonna, this is what we're gonna return, the full game object. Uh, well, we can tell right now, right away, we need our, a reference to the next object ID. So a mutable reference to is a u64 uh, we then need to increment that we need to be what its width is what its height is um, well, we know that floors are always going to be like the game, the game data cell size. So I only need to bring in the, uh, the, the game data. That allows me to have that in here, uh, our location. It's like, where is it going to be? So we do need to know the X for the location.
Okay, so we have our location X or location Y, and then uh, of course it's type floor. So we, we know that, so we can just straight up reach in and, and grab that. Uh, now, what are you yelling at me about? I expected uh, a U64 found a mute. Oh, uh, right. I put that in the right, wrong side. I want to, all right, let's store this into a variable. And then we're gonna return the uh, floor. There you go, that will make that happy. So if I replace floor object, create floor object with everything I'm doing a floor here. Can you not find that? Oh, because populate level doesn't exist yet. So we don't have, uh, we don't have this entire thing. So we're gonna have to do, uh, it's not a problem, I'm not using self. So this will be self with a capital S, create the floor object like that. Uh, and so you're missing uh, next object ID. Uh, the game data, uh, and then the location. So location is going to be um, the game data and that should be it. All right, so Can I borrow? It's already declared as. Oh, I guess I can just pass you in like that. Well, okay. This gives me a, a floor. I suppose um, ways to sort of like take this off a little bit, you know, make this a little bit nicer. We still we we need to know what the object ID is. So I can't really get away from that. Uh, that being said, this decrements now. That gives us the floor. Uh, I can just Add the floor straight into here. So cut you away, put you in there. That creates the floor. So grid.add what the floor is. Uh, that means I don't need this um, uh, this bracket right here. So it's a single line. I mean, it's not really a single line. It's it's broken up into multiple ones, but it's only one logical line now. Other things. If I know it's a floor, I don't need to say what its Y is. Um, we know that the floor is always in that location. So we can remove this. Okay, so we create next object ID. The game data, and then the location X. I'm not sure, um, 
location X, I can maybe like pass in just the index, like the offset, and then it can do this calculation itself. And that make it that might make it a little bit nicer too. Let's try that. So instead of location X, we're going to make this an offset, uh, which I believe is what are you? A U size. And so our location is actually going to be the game data dot cell size times the offset. And so you are just going to be the index. All right, so then we're going to do this adds it straight into the grid here. I could, um, if I'm going to have like a mutation for the grid, I could add the grid in and then not even do the grid add here, but rather just like self create for pass in immutable reference to the grid and then it will add it in too. So we could do that as well. So we could take in the grid. So instead of returning anything now, we won't turn anything at all. Where my mask up? There it is. Uh, we'll then do a grid dot add the floor. So we'll save you down here. Uh, and there we go. We have our, um, we have like a single line now replacing this here. Now we have just abstracted it down to this create floor object. Um, I might be able to like, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to like do anything else with, with this. Every time I create the, the actual object, I probably want to increment, um, I don't know if I wanted to like remember to do that here or down like down inside of these these functions. Okay, so start. Um, we're gonna create a floor to begin with. So if I follow this new um, this new setup. Uh, our next object ID, our game data, um, our index, and the grid. And that's it. Like that creates a floor exactly where we want it to be. Uh, then we can create uh, the start. Now we do this just once. So I'm not sure we necessarily need to care about uh, abstracting this out into a function. Don't need to add you into the floor. We add you into the start now. Uh, then we have this player. So we're going to create the player here. Add them and increment. Okay. Um, spike up happens once. Well, the floor happens too. And then we create the spike and add that in. 
Uh, and then the end, the exact same thing. We're gonna add the floor in. And then this end. All right. Seems seems good. Uh, let's go ahead and try running this. See see what it looks like. It should be exactly the same. Um, just the main difference is there. We're not calling that create the floor constantly over and over and over again. So I like that. That's nice. There's probably like a better way for us to put this. Like maybe we can throw this entire populate level somewhere else um, and not put it inside the main library. Uh, I'm not sure about that right this second, uh, but I think this creates the level for us. Let's go ahead and clean up and get rid of some of these warnings. Uh, a little bit too much. Uh, okay, so we're using this Y index, but only if we're drawing the grid. I'll add that in there so it will use them. It'll probably give us a warning if we decide to draw this grid, but that's less of a problem. Um, so we're not using this next object ID, so we may not need to store it in here. Uh, yeah, we don't need to increment next object ID here. It's incrementing as we populate the level. So we definitely don't need to do that ourselves. All right, no problems, no warnings, no nothing. And the game still works and is here, so perfect. Okay, so we refactored the level. Uh, we made that look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and end the marker for this here. Uh, and um, that'll be the end of this video onto, onto YouTube. Then we'll, then we'll figure out what the next thing is.